If you want to find out which of your ancestry out in family search has duplicates, there's a tool in Ancestral Quest that isn't really designed for that. It's designed for something else, but I found it's about the best way that I think is out there for finding the duplication out in family search. Depending on the way you use Ancestral Quest, there are two different methods for setting up to use this tool. If you have been using Ancestral Quest to record your ancestry, you most likely want to simply check duplicates for the records of family search that correspond to the records already in your personal database. Over the next couple of minutes, I'll show these users how to prepare their database to run the duplicate check. If you simply want to use Ancestral Quest's ability to check duplicates for your ancestral records in family search, regardless of whether these ancestors are in any existing Ancestral Quest database, the process to set up for this check is very different. I'll show this process in a minute. Just hang tight. If you're already using Ancestral Quest, and so the people in your AQ database are the ones you really are interested in, then what you want to do is just take your main database, like I've got here, and you go out to copy it. I'm going to say File, and let's save this under a different name. Um, right now it's my class database, but I want to call this maybe Duplicate Finder Database. So Ancestor Quest is making a copy of my file. Let me close this database file, close, and I'm not going to open the copy I just made. Okay, so I'm going to say open the duplicate finder database. Same exact data, but I'm going to mess with this one in a way that you don't want to mess with your real data. Okay, that's why I'm telling you to make a copy. If you don't want to do this on your main database, you want to do this on a copy of your database. If you'll now go to the family search menu, and drop down here to unlink the people in your file. I'm going to say unlink everybody in my file. Are you sure? You want to double check here that this is your duplicate finder database, not your real database? Okay, we just deleted the, the links to anybody in, my in this database to the corresponding links out in family search. Now, if you're not using an Access Request database already, and if you hear about this technique and you want to just generally do this on your ancestry, I would do this a little differently. So let me show for those people that aren't, don't have an AQ database what you want to do. First, you'd want to um, create a brand new database. So I'm going to close this one for a minute. I'm going to go up here and say this file new, and we'll call this duplicate finder 2. So for those of you that don't have been using AQ to really record your data, but you want to find out which of your family search people have duplicates, go to the family search menu now and drop down here to import family lines. And now, because I'm logged in as me, it knows who I am. If you were logged in as you, this would have your name up here. You want to download your ancestors, tell it how many generations. For a lot of you, you're going to want to go out probably eight, nine, ten generations. And if you just mainly want the ancestors and their families, this one step will do that. If you want to also have other collateral lines, then you need to, once you've imported the ancestors, come back to the screen and then add descendants to some of the you know, furthest out ancestors you've got. So using this import lines from Family Search, you can bring in from Family Search a snapshot of a lot of the data you want to concentrate on. Let me briefly show you how to do that. First of all, this option to import LDS ordinances, if you leave that on, that may help with matching later as you'll be able to see LDS ordinances, but those are only marginally helpful and it doubles the import time. I'm going to turn that off for now. For this test, let's try five generations of ancestors to import and start the import process. That's how easy it is to download as many generations as you want from Family Search into a local Ancestral Quest database in preparation for checking for duplicates. Um, in case some of you would like to add more than just ancestors but also grab descendants of an ancestor, let me just briefly show that. So let me drop to an ancestor at random here and I will go back to the import family lines. This time we're going to select that we want to add descendants to a person and I only want to do two generations this time and we'll now import. You could pick any person you want and download additional ancestors or descendants before you begin the next step of the process. Yes, we want to continue 
No, we don't need a backup. So we've now downloaded the ancestors we wanted and some descendants of an ancestor. We have a fair snapshot of our ancestry from Family Search. Just to show you how many people we've downloaded, let's go to the About screen here. We've downloaded 424 people. Now, just like for those people who already had an ancestor quest database, they had to unlink all records from Family Search in order for the duplicate check to work. Let's do that now on this database. Let's go to Family Search and unlink individuals all individuals and unlink. We've now cleared all the links for anybody in the file that we just downloaded so we're now prepared to do the duplicate check. Let's go back to the other file here. File, let's close this one and I'll open back up my copy of my database. So here's the technique. Once you've got the the names into a database that you want to find duplicates on Go to the Family Search menu and drop down here to Link or Upload Groups. You don't really intend to link or upload anybody. Your intent is to use this tool to find duplicates. Now you can say all. For purposes of this class, I'm going to select a group of maybe a couple hundred people. So I'm going to say I want a selected group. And I want to select perhaps, I'm going to go down here and define by RIN numbers. I'm going to say, why don't we scan from number, say, 1,000 to maybe 1,200. So we're just going to scan 200 people. Apparently there's some deletions in there because it says there's only 154 out of the 200 I just asked for. And now we're going to start matching. So Ancestral Quest right now is going to scan quickly each of these 154 people to determine whether or not they have matches out in Family Search. The point here is, as it does this, if there's more than one, it's going to alert you as to all of the possible matches out there. So far we've scanned 36 people, we found 32 of them out there. Five of those we weren't able to find, and the number keeps growing. It's family search, and what was the tab again, Nick? The option was to link or upload groups. Link or upload. Upload. The intent of the screen is if you've got a bunch of people in your database and you're first connecting with Family Search, it'll identify which of your people already exist out there and it will allow you then to link the people that it finds out there so you can link those people in your database with the corresponding people in Family Search. But then, to the degree that you've got people that Family Search doesn't have, that's down here that see this group that says not matched deceased? Yeah. Those are people that are in your database that it can't find out there in Family Search. And there's a chance that you might just find them if you do a more intensive, broader search. But there's a good chance that these people just don't exist out in Family Search, and you can then upload those to Family Search knowing that they don't exist out there. So this is a quick way to say, in a given group of people, let me match those that are out there and those that aren't out there. Let me get them out there. That's the purpose of the screen. You don't want to do 35,000 at the same time. No. <laughs> you want to work on groups small enough that you can kind of work on it, sure, spend however much time. time you've got, maybe, you know, whether you got 15 yeah. minutes today or whether you got two hours today. You but, keep track of those that you're doing that. Yeah. If you've got 35,000 people and you do them all at once, there's no way you're going to get through those in a setting. Yeah. And you're going to be kind of tying up your computer. and You, you want to do these in small enough <clears> groups that you can finish the group. Okay. You we by, just you do it by written number. Um, well, you can. That's one way to break it down. Okay. That's, to me, Four. the most efficient way to break it down is to say, okay, if I've got 3,000 people in my database, why don't we do maybe 10 groups of 300 at a time or okay. something like that. Yeah. So RIN's 1 to 300, then 301 to 600 or whatever. Or, you know, there's yeah. other ways to slice and dice this thing, but that's one way to make sure you don't miss any records. And don't overlap stuff. So. Okay, we've now completed the process. It says finished. If you want, you could push that button to restart. Typically, you would do that on this group. You'd select another group and then restart. But right now, out of our 154 people, it found 130 of them. It might have found two, and it couldn't find 22. Okay, let's look at these 130 that it found. So I'm going to click the view button here. 
Now, what you're really looking for on this screen, let me make sure you understand the screen. On the left side of the screen, this is what's in your database, okay? On the right side of the screen, this is what it found on one of the records out in FamilySearch. This middle column is what you're looking for. This is really the kicker as to why this technique works. If there's only one match out there, there's not a likely duplicate for that person, okay? If there's more than one, that means there's probably duplicates for that person. So this is, as far as I know, it's probably the fastest way you can find exactly who in your ancestral lines has duplication out on family search. Let's take a look at this top one here, Eliza Barwell. It's got four potential duplicates out there. If you come down here to preview, notice this high confidence match is probably for sure our person. So I can click on the name here and that brings that family search record, the one I just clicked on, down here so I can compare it with my record. And help me out here, does this look like the same person? Yeah. It probably does. Let's scroll down to families. Same parents, same spouses. We're going to check the box to say that one is the same. Now, do any of these others look like they might be the same? same different father, different father, different father. I, I'm, I'm thinking even though they got the same date, these are all christening dates. You see the asterisk? That says it's christening date. Two and four are the same. These two might be the same with each other. But this is my ancestor, so I'm not really too interested in these guys because they're not my ancestors. But the purpose of what we're doing here is to find duplicates on your own people. Since I didn't find duplicates in that one, let's go down and look at the next one here. So you, you highlight kind of one at a time these ones that have more than one. You come out here to preview. Um, these look like they're more likely a duplicate here. Let me again click on the top record. Uh, birthday is four years apart. Okay, birth, yeah. Well, let's take a look at other things here. Um, so the birth, death, burial are all the same. That's a lot. That's so the similar. spouse is the same. Very similar. That's the same person as my record. Now let's look at the next one. The birth date, except for the year, is the exact same information. Like somebody had a typo in one of these. They give you sources there? On a different screen, you would get the sources. But it looks like, you know, if you're LDS, the baptism date being the same. I'm guessing this is the same person. Let's scroll down some more. Okay. This particular record in family search is just a single record out there. It's not connected to any parents. It's not connected to spouses or children. It's just a standalone record out there, which means you're not going to be messing up with an extended grouping of, of people if you do something here. I'm feeling pretty confident that this is the same person. That's a very unique name. And everything else about the birth is the same, except there's a what appears to be a typo. Um, anyway, this would be up to you as the it's your ancestor. If, if you decide this is the same person, and I think it is, you would check the box here to say, I really think that is also the same person as my person. And then you come down here to the Merge button. And if you click that, that will start the process. Okay, somebody out there said they believe they are not a match. They gave no reason for it. So now it's up to you whether you want to, there, there is a way in family search to say, well, allow the match, I really think it is. So you could override that and then you could match them. I'm not going to do that here. I just want to, uh, the technique I'm trying to teach is how to find the duplication. So the point is you come down each one here that has more than one. You take a look, you highlight them, you drop into preview. You kind of scan one at a time. You click and verify data. You check the other one and any that you feel are the same. You mark the one up to two at a time that are the same, and then you merge them. Then you move on to the next one. So the point is, this, this method can very quickly identify which of the people in a, any group of people have duplicates out there, potential duplicates, versus those that don't likely have duplicates. Okay? Wor worthwhile process? Oh, yeah. Okay. But like I say, this screen was not designed specifically for that. It was designed to help you match up your records to the corresponding record in Family Search. But the fact that we added in here this count of how many potentials there are, that means it can, it, it's a really handy tool yeah. to find duplication. Okay?
you know, and even if you don't immerse your family search, you just write down those bits. Right. I do that, and I go to family search, and I like I can. And, and, and those records again, if you you yeah. come here, you can just on anybody. I, what I, you're saying, I guess, is these family search IDs. I go through the yeah, up there. So let me skinny that down a little bit, and skinny some more things down a little bit here. So basically, all you're doing is cleaning up family search. That's right. The, the oh, process yeah. of this is to clean up family to do search. With the ancestry nothing to do really with your ancestor quest database. This is all about cleaning up the family search database. So the, the point of what I'm doing here is just to, to get this down where you can see these PID numbers and then record them. Okay. But I understand family search. Their algorithm is a little different. The one that they use for finding duplicates than the one we use. And I've heard from a lot of users that we do a better job at finding duplicates. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson on how to find quickly duplication out there in family search using Ancestral Quest.